Now, I want to know where possible turning points are. Turning points, because I want a maximum. So I will say possible turning points when, when what? When the derivative is zero, right? When dv on dr equals zero. Okay, please, I've said it enough times, do not just go write the next line as blah, 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 blah equals zero. Okay, for, for what reason? Okay, because you're doing something, you're looking for something. Okay, so therefore, um, pi h on r is 2rr squared equals zero. Now you can see the clear advantage of having brought that constant out the front. You can pretty much ignore him. Okay. Um, I don't have to, I can divide through by r, capital R, because r is not zero, right? Because it's an actual length. Does that look good so far? Checking out? Okay. So from there, I'm just going to make a statement. What is the actual value of capital R that I'm suspecting is where my turning point is? It looks to me, yeah, like I'm going to say 3r equals 2r, right? 3 big R equals 2 little r. So therefore, big R is just uh, 2 little r on 3. That's where I think there's a turning point. Okay? So I'm going to find out. I need to find out the nature of this thing, right? I haven't been told to determine the nature, but I do need to determine the nature. I don't want a minimum, do I? Now, I have no reason to think it's a minimum because you remember those different cylinders that I drew before. They look like, those look like the minimums to me, okay? But I need to test it for sure. I've got some different methods for using this. What should I use? I think I'm going to go second derivative, right? Why is second derivative a smart place to go for this particular function? Yeah, this, look, look at that, right? There, there's the first derivative. It's really easy to differentiate, right? Here's the second derivative, here it comes, right? I've got that pi h on r out the front, which they're just constants, it's okay. And then in here, what do I get? I get two little r, take away six, 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 r. six r. capital R, very good. So there's my second derivative, and I have an actual value to test, right? So when the radius I'm after, is 2r on 3, okay? The second derivative is, okay, I've got my pi h on r out the front. 2r, that's still a constant. Take away what? Four. Six. Yeah, it looks like 4r, right? Because it's going to be 12r on 3, which is 4r, okay? So this is actually minus, oh, capital R. Uh, no, no, lowercase. No, minus two. Because we're subbing it. I subbed it in. Oh. The, all the capital R's are gone now. Yeah. Okay. So now this is just the constant. Okay. Um, that's going to cancel and cancel and cancel. So it looks like I get minus 2 pi h. Okay. Now I'm not finished yet. I haven't drawn a conclusion yet. What, what, what was I doing the second derivative so for? Concave down, it's concave down. So yeah, good. I, I need to know the sign of this thing, don't I? Okay. So, so this, right? This is the second derivative, right? But I know that h is a positive number because it's a height, okay? It's a length, yeah, that's right. So since, since it's positive, right? Since the height is positive, then when you multiply a positive by a negative number, it's negative, yeah? It's differentiating, you're differentiating with respect to a constant together. Uh, where? Oh, yeah, I am too. Okay, so therefore, I've got my second derivative, which is negative which is concave oh, down. Please don't skip that step about saying concavity. The concavity is why I know <laughs> it's a relative maximum, right? Please do not jump to saying that it's a relative maximum after making a statement about the sign of the second derivative. The sign of the second derivative tells you about the concavity, and the concavity tells you about whether it's a max or a min. Does that make sense? That's like a really crucial step in it. It's important okay. to say max or relative. Uh, yeah, because I don't know it's absolutely. Okay. Now, in this case, you can see if I would like testing endpoints is trivial because it's like, oh, let me test. You can't feel Let me test one where the what are the boundaries, by the way? Like the radius, which is what I'm working with. It could be zero. Okay, no volume. Yeah. Or it could be. The radius of the current, in which case it has no height, so therefore also zero, so I don't need to worry about that. 
Hooray, I've found a maximum, right? So pretty much I've done all the hard work. That's the radius that gives me the maximum I want. What was the actual question? So sub that back in to find out. Yeah, good. Um, here, right here, is my function, um, is my volume as a function of that capital R, right? So I can say, therefore, the maximum volume is, Uh, v equals pi, uh, uh, whoops, I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm going to use this one here, pi h on r, r times, what's r squared? It'll be 4 r squared on 9, okay with that? Take away 8 r squared on 27, cubed. cubed, of course it is, okay? Cubed everything else except the r, okay, good, that looks good. Let's tidy up a little bit. Um, I'll lose this r, this r, and that'll become square. You quit with that. It's all over, well, the common denominator, I guess I'm going to choose is 27. So this needs to multiply by 3. So I've got pi h times 12 r squared take away 8 r squared, all over 27. Are you content with that? Does that look good? So 4 r squared pi h on 27, and don't forget, little r and little h are just numbers. So I'm done. Okay. Now, let me now read for you, because that was hard. I deliberately made this question harder than it was before, just so you could do the mental effort for it. Okay. Let me read for you the actual questions that made up the part so you can see how someone walked you through. Part 1 says, use similar triangles to show this. They actually give you that result. They're trying to get you in the right direction. Now, if you don't see that, you can still use it in part two, which I'm about to tell you. Okay? So there's the first part. They tell you you need to use similar triangles and you need to eliminate a variable. They didn't even tell you they're eliminating a variable if that's what you're doing there. Okay? Part two is find the volume as an expression in terms of the radius, right? in terms of the variable capital R. So there's a second step. And then the third step is, okay, what they actually tell you is find the maximum volume. So you know how to differentiate. You've already handed, been handed, okay, this is the volume in terms of one variable. So off you go. Okay. So I forced you to make a series of decisions that the question itself, as it was originally presented, it makes those decisions for you. But the decisions are the hard part, which is why I wanted you to think about it. And if I wanted to make an easy question harder, I would just take away the scaffold. Right? And I can say, all right, here's your end point. Can you get there? Do you know the way to get there? More likely, you'll see a question like this. One, two, three. But that's the easier case. right? And you guys know it enough. We talked through it. And you guys told me every step of the way. Um, you can go from A to Z without you know, too much difficulty. Okay. Any questions? Now, uh, what's great about this question? One of the reasons why I picked it out, or well, there's two big reasons. Number one, it was also hard because everything's like gross. There's no simplification of any numbers, right? Because you're just dealing with little r, little h all the way through, so you just have to carry them. That's hard, it just makes the algebra harder. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is though, see these one, two, three steps? They're the same every time. I, I mean, I was talking about steps before and saying, oh, you know, you can't just memorize steps. But if you wanted to think about it, there is a general pattern. It's the one we talked about up here, right? You've got to get rid of a variable. You've got to get whatever you're trying to maximize or minimize in terms of that variable. And then you want to differentiate and find your max or your min, okay? Um, it's worth saying that if I had, if we'd chosen poorly, just watch what would have happened. I could make this statement here. Right? And then it's like, okay, I'm going to try and eliminate out the capital R. Watch what happens. Right? So I'm going to get, looks to me like, um, R H on H equals R minus R. Right? So then I get, let's add him over here and subtract him over there so I can take out that R minus H on H. Okay? So there's the capital R that I can get rid of. And I'm going to put that. That, oh uh, yuck, right? Like look, look at how far nestled in the actual variable you're trying to differentiate with respect to is into the function, and right? So it it's, well. yeah, it's right, once you square it, it's even worse. Okay, so therefore you could have gone there, but just all of this would have been harder, okay? So that's how you can kind of know, all right, even if you make a poor choice, just go back, just go back. You look at this and you're like, no thanks. You come back and you get much easier. It's very confusing how like lowercase r and h is very That's true, yeah. yeah. For the proof, I still want to try and lose. You have to actually 
Okay, so this very much depends on, and this is a perfect example of, like, look at how much, where is the, where is the emphasis in this question? What is it assessing, right? And it's assessing these one, two, three exact things that I, I've mentioned, right? In fact, this would be pretty much a four mark question. One mark, two marks, three marks for differentiating and finding the max, and then the fourth mark is on the actual volume, okay? Um, does the similar triangles rate a mark? Yeah, because it's the, it's the oh, one, the question they that gave says, it to you. yeah, use similar triangles. If they say use similar triangles, right, like what they're looking for you is to get this, okay? Like, can I get that result? If I see someone get this, then I'm going to give them a big thumbs up, especially because I haven't given you like, A, B, I haven't called this anything. Like, you, you don't have like, oh, I'm going to say triangle this, 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 and triangle that, 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 um, and the angles. So you don't have, you've not been equipped to talk about that, which is one of the clues that you don't need to worry about it. Now, if you want to be super rigorous, after you finish this question, with all that spare time you have in the exam, then come back. And if you really want to, write a similar triangles proof in here. There's nothing stopping you.